Welcome to Lesson 6-3, Standard Form. Today we're going to talk about how to take equations that are in slope-intercept form and point-slope form and put them into standard form. All right, so first we're going to take a look at these equations here. You have a standard form, slope-intercept, and point-slope. And I'm asking you here to circle true or false for these. So for the first one, I want to know, can you find the slope of the equation in the standard form problem. So we're looking at this one right here. So this one's standard form. Can you find the slope just by looking at it? In this case, you would have said false because there is nothing in the standard form. You know standard form is a times x plus b times y equals c. Nowhere in there do you see m. It is not given to you right off the bat. You can find it, but it is not just given to you. Slope-intercept form, can you find the slope? If you say no to this, you are ridiculous because slope is right in the name. You can find the slope. We've talked about this several times. You know that because it says slope, it implies that it's in there. So I know all of you said true to this one. And then point-slope form, once again, you have this beautiful word slope. It tells you that it is true. You can see the slope in both point-slope and slope-intercept. And then in this case, you know that the slope is negative two-thirds. All right, and then the next one, true or false again, we are going to find out, can you read the y-intercept from the equation? So is it given to you within the equation? Again, in standard form, we are not given the y-intercept, or we do not know right off the bat that it is the y-intercept, so that is false. So then for slope-intercept form, again, we have that word intercept, and you have to remember that it means the y-intercept. So in this case, it would be true, and we know in slope-intercept form that that y-intercept is the last part. So the minus 4 tells us that the slope or the intercept is negative 4. And then point-slope form. In this case, you're just given a point. You don't know if it is the uh, y-intercept all the time right off the bat, but in this case, looking at it, you are not given the y-intercept, so it is false. And in this case, again, the y-intercept is negative 4. All right, so moving right along, I want to know, so if I am given both intercepts, or if I am given standard form, how can I find both of the intercepts? So to make life easy, you can find the x-intercept and the y-intercept easily in standard form. To find the x-intercept, you take your c and you divide it by a. So you take c and divide it by a. Now remember, the equation is a times x plus b times y equals c. So finding your y-intercept, I want you to take a second and think about it. How do you think you would find your y-intercept? You said you take your c and divide it by b. You would be correct. So even though we aren't initially given the y or the x-intercept just by the standard equation, we can find it very easily by taking that answer, that c, and dividing it by our x and by our y to find its corresponding intercept. And then how can you find a point on the line using the slope-intercept form? Well, in slope-intercept form, you have the y-intercept. And you know that for the y-intercept, x has to equal 0. So therefore, you can figure that the point 0 B is on the line because you know your y-intercept. So in the last case, we had negative 4 as a y-intercept. So you know that 0, negative 4 is a point on the line. All right, so creating linear equations in standard form given the slope and the point. You have two different methods here that you can use. One, you can use point-slope form. Or two, you can use slope-intercept form. I am going to require you to use both in your your turn problems because I want you practicing with both. Once you're given the option and it just says to put the numbers or to put it in standard form, you can choose. But for your notes and for some of your homework, you are going to use both. 
before you decide which one you like better. All right, so in this case, we're given the slope, and we know that the slope is 5, and we have our point negative 2, 4. So when you're using point slope form, you know that the form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So here my y is 4, and my slope is 5. And my x is negative 2, so I plug in all of those points. And then I simplify. I don't want to just jump to that first, or those boxes that they have there. First, I want us to go through and remember that y minus 4 would stay the same, is equal to 5 times, well, we have minus a negative right here. And we know that minus a negative is the same thing as plus a positive. So I'm going to change this to x plus 2. Now remember, we're trying to go to standard form, so we need something connected to the x. And we can't add x and 2 because of the fact that they are not like terms. And we also don't want these parentheses. So in order to break the parentheses, we have to use the distributive property. So we distribute to the 5 to both the x and the 2, and I get y minus 4 is equal to 5 times x plus... 5 times 2, which is 10. Now what I can do is I can, I want to get my x and my y on the same side, and I want to get my like terms put together. So in this case, I have like terms of 4 and 10, so I want those to get together, and I want y and x on the same side. So to do that, I have to subtract 5x from both sides. So what I do one, I do the other. Now I get y minus 4 minus 5x is equal to 10. And then I want to combine. I want to get 4 and 10 on the same side. To get rid of minus 4, I have to add 4 to both sides. So I end up with y, and this is going to go right over here, minus 4 is equal to oh, I'm sorry, in standard form, y minus 5x is equal to 14. Okay. Then now, if I want to get it more specific or more correct, I want to move it so that way the 5x is in front, so I change it to addition. So this would be y plus a negative 5x equals 14. Now that means that I can move the 5x to the front, so negative 5x plus y is equal to 14. Again, before you can rearrange those numbers, you have to change the equation to addition, because addition is the only one that allows us, outside of multiplication, the addition is the only one that allows us to move our numbers around. All right, so now we have slope-intercept form. Since we're looking at slope-intercept form, we need to substitute for the slope, and then we're also going to substitute for the point. So in this case, I know that the equation is y equals mx plus b, and I'm just going to remind myself up here, equals, not minus, mx plus b. So I'm going to substitute 5 for m. I know that 2, or negative 2, is my point. So that's my x, and then y was 4. Now I can go through and I can combine. I know that 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. 4 stays the same. To get 10 to the other side, I have to add 10 to both sides, and I get 14. So now I can write this in slope-intercept form. My slope is 5, and my y-intercept is positive 14. Now, to rearrange this, now I want to rewrite it in standard form. Again, I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides, and I get y minus 5x equals 14. But I want to rearrange it so it's addition, so I have to change it to y plus a negative 5x equals 14. So I know that I can do negative 5x plus y is equal to 14. 
So no matter which method you choose, you're going to get the same answer. All right, it just depends on what you're given and what you feel more comfortable with. Again, you're going to be required to try with both. Once, it, once we get further into the module, you'll be able to choose which method you like better and go from there. All right, so now you do have a couple of your turn problems. And those your turn problems are numbers four and five. Okay, we're not going to do number three. We're not going to do the reflect. You can choose which one you like better later. I actually, for number four, want you to use uh, point slope form. And then for number five, use slope intercept form. Right, so going through here, I will show you on the your turn. So use point slope. And then for number five, use slope. right along. So now we're going to create linear equations in standard form given two points. So we're not given the slope. So since we're not given the slope, you guys know that we have to find it. Anytime that we're writing equations in standard form, uh, slope intercept form, or point slope form, we got to find that slope. All right. So here we have our points. I'm going to make this my 2 and this my 1. So I have negative 6 minus 2 over 3 minus 5. Negative 6 minus 2 is a negative 8. And 3 minus 5 gives me a negative 2. Negative 8 divided by negative 2 gives me a positive 4. So I have a slope of 4. So now, in order to change this to standard form, I'm going to put it into point slope form. So I have y minus y1, and since I chose this as my 1, I'm going to start with that. So y minus 2 is equal to 4 times the quantity x minus 5. Okay, so again, I'm going to use the distributive property and do 4 times x and 4 times 5. So it'll give me y minus 2 is equal to 4x minus 1. However, if I use my other point, I could end up doing y minus a negative 6 is equal to 4 times x minus 3. Again, minus a negative is the same thing as plus a positive, so this would turn into y plus 6 is equal to 4 x minus 12. And then to arrange these into standard form, so I have, let me move over here, y minus 2 equals 4x minus 20. I am going to add 2 and add 2, and I'm also going to subtract 4x and subtract 4x. So here I'm left with y minus 4x equals, because these two cancel each other out, and these two cancel each other out. Remember, because there's this subtraction side here, this is a negative 20. So negative 20 plus a positive 2 gives you 18. So then this becomes y plus a negative 4x equals 18. So negative 4x plus y equals 18. Right? And no matter which one you did this with, you're still going to get the same thing in standard form. Right? So what I would like you to do is if you have space in your book, do it in your book. Otherwise, on a separate sheet of paper, I want you to practice converting this to standard form. Make sure you do your math correctly, and then you know that you need to get to this negative 4x minus y equals 18. Actually, this should actually be a positive 4x. So if 
moving right along. So now here you have an actual real world application problem to it. So remember when we're doing the real world application, identify your parts. All right. So the initial amount of water in the hot tub was 440 gallons. You have that key word there of initial. And since it's the initial, you know that this is going to be your Y intercept. Since it's your Y intercept, you know that your point is going to be zero and then 440. Because in this case, X is your time and Y is your gallons. So when there's zero hours, we started with 440 gallons. Okay. And then after an hour and a half, the amount of water had decreased to 320. So not by 320, but to 320. So you know that your point is one and a half hours for my X, I have 320 for my Y. So then again, we have to find the slope. So I'm going to do 440 minus 320. And I'm doing it this way because they're larger numbers. So when you're working with larger numbers, it's easier to work with them as positives instead of as negatives. And in this case, it's easier to do 0 minus 1 half. Because we know that that's just negative 1 half. And then 440 minus 320 is 120. And then if you take 120 and divide it by your one, negative 1 half, you get negative 80. Okay, so your slope in this case is negative 80, which means it's losing 80 gallons every one hour. Now I need to substitute the slope and the coordinates of one of the points into point slope form so I can rewrite it in standard form. So why don't we go ahead and use the 440. So y minus 440 is equal to negative 80 times the quantity x minus 0. So in this case, I have to substitute, and I'm not going to, when I substitute 80, or not substitute, distribute, when I distribute the 80 to the 0, 80 times 0 is 0, 80 times x, negative 80 times x is negative 80x, still have y minus 440, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 440 to both sides. So I'm left with y equals negative 80 times x plus 440. Then I am going to add 80x to both sides because it's negative, so I can add it, which is nice because then I know that this is just 80 times x plus y is equal to 440. Right, so you have a couple more of the your turn problems. Again, I want you for numbers 10 and 11, I want you to identify all of your pieces. So again, my x is going to be my what, my y is what, what are my points, how do I find my slope, go through all of those. If you need more space because it looks like you don't have a lot in there, grab an extra sheet of paper, put it in there, and then staple it on. And as always, if you have any questions, be sure to write them down or email me so we can go over them in class.